when you mention the words Ford Mustangs, the majority of people, in fact, the vast majority of human beings, the first thing they're going to think of is, of course, a two-door, rear-wheel drive sports car, usually with a V8 engine, manual, automatic, fast, fun to drive, sounds great, and most importantly, burns gas. But before 2021, you would have never thought electric car. However, that's exactly what Ford decided to do in 2021. They did something crazy with the Mustang name. They put it on an electric crossover SUV called the Mustang Mach-E. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel if you don't already know. My name is Andy and today we're going to take a full tour of this Mach-E Mustang and uh, see what this thing's all about. Get out on the road and see what it's like to drive. It should be quite fun. Before we begin, special thanks to Ted Russell and Ford on Parkside Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee for providing the Mach-E for today's review. Once you're done here, be sure to check them out at the link in the description below. I want to start with the exterior styling of the Mach-E. Now, personally as a car enthusiast, I like the way it looks. I'm going to come around and say I'm not a Mustang purist. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh my god, what is this? Why do they call this a Mustang? How dare you? I'm a car enthusiast. I love the actual Mustang sports cars. I also love that they're still making them, but I like this thing too. Anyway, the styling of this thing is actually really cool, I think, and very, very sporty for a four-door crossover SUV. You can see it's got some decent lines on it. Nothing crazy. I mean, it does have a nice little wheel haunch right there, and it looks really good. No exterior door handles that we can see right as we first look at it. We'll get to that in a minute, but my favorite touch is right here. This is, of course, the roof of the Mach-E Mustang. Now, They've created this interesting illusion here where the color of the car runs down here and you think that this is the top of the roof. What they've done on all your Mach-E Mustangs is the roof actually ends here, but it's black above the body color on all of them. And it creates this illusion that it's got this sports car shape, this fastback coupe shape to a four door. And when you first glance at this thing, you think that's where the roof ends, but then you look again and you see up here, that's actually where it ends. And this actually gives you a lot of headroom, very good headroom actually, but still tricks your eyes, make it look very sporty, very coopy. And I'll admit, I knew of this design feature since it was debuted. And even now, every time I look at one of these, I have to do a double take because I forget that this is here. Very cool illusion, and it really, really does work. Right here on the front driver's side fender is your charge port door. If you just push on that, it'll spring open. And that's where you plug your charger in. You got these five little lights here in a circle. Um, each one of these represents 20% battery charge. So as you're charging, these things will light up every time it reaches another 20%. Kind of give you an idea of how far along your battery charge is. I do love on the inside, it says horsepower right here. Let's see what they did there, horsepower. Anyway, push that again and it closes right back up. All right, let's talk about the front end styling now. I'm starting to get the top here. You have this really neat looking hood. It's got all these humps in it going across. Neat sports car look. I definitely like that. Here you've got the, where there would be a grill on a gasoline car, but obviously that's not the case here. Instead, you have this black outline that kind of goes around. It makes it gives it the illusion of a grill shape. And you've got this new nifty little textured black Mustang logo right there in the center of the grill. Down below that, there's some flaps open for uh, battery cooling. Cool part up front is these headlights. I really like these headlights. So as you can see, they are LED headlights. You got your lows here, brights here. And then your running lamps are this strip that runs across the top and these three bars that run between the headlight pod. But it gets even better when you turn on the turn signal. Now, as you can see here, when you turn on the turn signal, instead of replacing the top white strip with, with amber, it adds an amber strip above that. I love how it flashes. It is sequential in nature, but instead of turning on a little bit here in the center and then sweeping out, turning on as it sweeps, it turns the whole thing on and then sweeps off. And for anybody like me who's watched a lot of Doug DeMuro videos, that's how I found out about it. Apparently there's a US regulation that says on these sequential lights, the first flash has to be a certain size or whatever. I don't know why. It's not like you're not going to see it um, in order for it to be legal. This gets around that because it lights the whole thing up and sweeps off. And I, I really like that. I kind of like the way it looks actually. More cars should be doing it this way. Maybe they wouldn't have to add aux auxiliary flashing lights in the rear. And that brings us to the rear of the Mach-E. Now, really it looks mostly like just your typical crossover SUV in the rear except Mustangified. So of course you got that same black textured Mustang logo in the center of the lift gate, little uh, backup cam above that. Pretty normal, everything else. Your reverse light is mounted down here in the very bottom of the bumper. 
Not sure if that was an afterthought or if it was purposely done for style, maybe to dedicate these taillight housings strictly to lights and signals, I don't know. However, let's talk about these taillight modules because these things are uh, kind of neat. So as you can see right now, just the normal running lights are on right now. Just the low intensity red LEDs like you see when the car is just sitting still or driving along. Now when I hit the brake pedal, you're going to notice that the upper half lights up as the brake lights. So what in the world is the deal with the lower half? Well, if I hit the turn signal here, you're going to see they start flashing in that same sequential signal that the fronts do, where the whole thing lights up and they kind of sweep off. And in this case, they're actually amber or orange, unlike most Mustangs of the past that were just all red. They just shared the brake lights and signals. It's kind of cool how they split that up. Now you see if I turn this off and activate the four ways, in the past, the turn signal lights just flashed. They weren't sequential with the four ways. In this case, even with the four ways on, they are sequential. Oh, and here's that ultra low mounted reverse light I was talking about a minute ago. Before we get in, I want to talk about the key situation. Now here, of course, is your key. It's just a typical Ford key. It's got your standard buttons, lock, unlock, tailgate. The backside does have the Mustang logo, which is really nice touch instead of just a Ford logo. But the thing about the Mach-E is you only get one key fob with this car, which is strange. Up until now, you know, throughout most of the history of cars, whether it be during the time of physical steel keys, all the way up to keyless entry systems like this, you always got two keys. So what's up with that? That's because Ford figures most people are going to use this, the Ford Pass app. Now, I can't demonstrate it because you see mine is not being friendly to me. But with the Ford Pass app, you program, your, you program it to your car, and this thing acts as your key. Not only that, but from the app, you can do things like roll the windows down, start the vehicle up, turn on your climate control, track your car if you need to find it, whatever. You can do all kinds of cool stuff from this app. And I guess Ford figured most people are probably going to use this, but of course you're still going to get the physical key because you never know you may need it. Now let's talk about actually getting into the car. Now, and right now the door is locked, mirrors are folded in, it's, it is locked. Now like I said before, there's no obvious door handles on the back of this car, so how in the world do you open the door? What you're going to see here is there's this tab, this little flap on the outside right here below the pillar. And above that is this circular button. So long as this, if the car is locked, the key must be on you, but you touch this button, press it, and the door pops out a little bit. But before we open it all the way up, I want to show you something. I cannot push this door back in. The reason for that is there's a little post, a kickstand, or whatever you want to call it, that pops out near the bottom of the door that holds it back from being pushed back in. That way you can't accidentally slam your fingers and things like that. Now if we grab this and pull it all the way open, that little post is going to retract and we can open the door all the way and close it back, no, no problem. Now up here you can see some numbers lit up in red. This is of course Ford's traditional keypad unlocking system. Of course it's just capacitive touch now instead of physical buttons. So if you had to leave the keys in your car or whatever, you could just type in your code and unlock the doors. Now, if you want to lock the doors back from outside the car, of course you can push the button on the fob like any other car, same to unlock. Or with the fob on you, you can just tap this little lock icon and it locks the car. Now your rear doors have a very similar setup. It has a little lock icon, so you can actually lock the doors from the back door, which is also kind of a cool touch. But you see it has this button here, but it doesn't have the tab like on the front. I'm gonna go ahead and push that button and the door's gonna pop out. And once again, I can't close it because of that post. But without a tab, where are you supposed to grab? Well, you just stick your hand right here behind the door. Once again, you can't close your fingers in it, so don't worry about it. There's this little rubber bit right here that you're supposed to grab a hold of and open the rear door up to enter the car. Once it's open all the way, you just close it back like normal. Now that the door is open and we can get in the car, let's start looking at the interior. Starting with this door panel. And I really like this spec on this car. It's got this black kind of soft touch material almost like leather. It's all black, but it's got a little bit of contrasted red stitching up here in the armrest and a little bit of chrome strip going through there. It looks really, really nice. An interesting touch here is the, the way you get out of the car. Here is your interior door release. So if you're in the car, you want to get out, this is what you do. just pull it backwards and you can open the door right up. I'm pretty sure the last time I saw this was probably on a late 80s, early 90s Volvo. Continuing forward, we have this nice speaker grill here with the B&O logo on it. That's right, this is the Bang & Olufsen sound system that you can option in your Mustang Mach-E. Down here the door sill, this plate says first edition because this is one of the very first Mach-E Mustangs that was ever released. This of course was the first edition people could order upon release of the, of the car. So kind of cool, you know, I was able to get my hands on a first edition. 
and in this neat red color. Here are your front seats, fully power adjustable. Here's your controls for that. Right here, you've got some nice black leather and more contrasted red stitching. I love how they did it. It looks really cool, really sporty. Got some half eh, okay bolsters, not, not insane, but they're okay. And a lot of perforations in this seat. And that, can, that same design continues up to your headrest. Looks really, really nice. And over to your center console armrest. Same thing there. Here's your center console control area with your shifter and your parking brake and whatnot also trimmed in that nice red stitching. Sitting down in the interior, the same thing continues across the dash. You got the black with the red stitching, which is really, really nice. I have this interesting material above that. I'm not sure what they're trying to emulate there. Maybe something metallic. It's obviously not, but it looks nice. Here are your steering wheel. Same thing. It's black. It's got, once again, the red stitching in it. And in the center, that new textured Mustang logo. Now you got a typical array of controls on the wheel. Here's the controls for your adaptive cruise, your lane keep, your uh, following distance, that kind of thing. And over here is the controls for your phone, a stereo, and things like that. Fairly typical stocks over here for signals and for wipers. I do like the intermittent wiper control, how it's kind of this wheel inside the stock. You can control it from front or back. Now, if you look right here above the steering wheel, you're going to see this little thing in front of it with these two infrared LEDs blink. You can only see these through a camera lens, by the way. What in the world is this thing? This is here to monitor the driver's eyes to make sure you're focusing on the road because these cars can be equipped with Ford's Blue Cruise hands-free driving system, which when activated and if you're on an approved split lane highway, allows you to go completely hands-free driving. It will slow down, speed up with the cars in front of you. It'll follow curves. It recognizes speed signs. And with the proper update, it'll even allow you to hit the signal switch and tell it to change a lane all by itself. Now, unfortunately, this particular car does not have it programmed into it, so I'm not gonna be able to actually demonstrate that today, but that's what this is for. This is to monitor your eyes to make sure you are paying attention to the road in front of you. And as long as you are, it will continue to pretty much drive itself. Now, if it notices that you're looking away from the road or you're not completely focused straight ahead, it'll give you some warnings. And if you don't respond to those warnings, it will deactivate the system. Come up closer to the dash, you're going to see this same speaker grill material that you saw on the doors, and it runs all the way across. This is your big dash mounted speaker that you only get with the Bang Olufsen sound system in this car. So, really cool. If you want the cool big dash speaker, you got to get the BO system. Right here is your power start stop button. So, hit the brake, hit the button, and the car will come to life. And you get some neat animations on the cluster and on the infotainment screen. Let's start by talking about the gauge cluster screen in this car. Now, this is a 10 inch diagonal screen, but of course it's not very tall and it's kind of long side to side. You don't get a lot of information on here. You get what you need. So here, of course, is your range. And I like how they dis display both the driving range in miles and battery percentage, which is really nice. Also down in the lower left corner, you get your little compass there. Here's your speedometer. And I love how just like in the gasoline powered Mustangs, it says, ground speed underneath the speedometer there's absolutely no reason to do that except it's cool over here on the right side of course you get your your prindle for for your gear selector position and of course you get your odometer down here in this corner now this thing will display some animations for your drive modes but i believe it only does that when the vehicle is being driven not sitting still now you see right here in the center of the screen there is a little top down animation view of your mach e and if i turn on the adaptive cruise you can see there's some lines appear in front of it. Now these are actually to indicate how what your following distance is. So if I hit the buttons and decrease the following distance, you can actually see the car kind of move up as if it's moving closer and closer to the next car. All right, now let's talk about this center infotainment screen. Now, first of all, let's zoom out and look at the size of this thing. Now this thing is 15.5 inches diagonal. This is a big screen. Starting here at the top, you can see there's this little top, top bar. It's almost like the status bar on your iPhone or Android, whatever. You got time, temperature, connectivity status up here on the top over on the side you got this little icon we'll get to that in a minute but in the center you see where these two initials are this is someone's initials i'm not going to click on that because it'll drop their name into view and i don't want to put that on the internet but this is a driver profile now in this car you can set up to five driver profiles on this car you get in select your driver profile it's going to set all your vehicle settings all the configurations that you set up on that profile when you touch that button that way up to five different people can have the car set up however they want another really cool thing it does is it will actually adjust your range estimate based on your driving habits you know how hard you typically drive that kind of thing also based on where you happen to be going if you put something into the navigation how traffic's doing all that stuff it'll adjust your range estimate based on you and your trip really kind of cool here's basically your home screen it's got your audio 
Um, you've got a different a bunch of station presets here. Got some tiles down below for your phone, you know, your trip odometer, that kind of thing. Apple CarPlay. Touch, touch this, gonna pull your navigation up. And it's a pretty nice looking navigation map. Now this, of course, is Ford's latest sync system. It's really nice, very responsive to your touch. Up here in this top left corner is a front view image of a Mach-E. If we tap on that, it's gonna open up this big menu. The first thing it takes you to under the controls tab is drive modes. You have three drive modes. Whisper is kind of your comfort mode, your calm mode. In fact, it describes it as seamless drive, calm, and quiet. Next is engage, it's a little bit sportier. Describes it as balanced drive, fun, and engaging. And then down here is unbridled, which is a great name, you know, Mustang horse, it's a perfect name for this. This is your all out sport mode. Described as exhilarating drive, machine and road align as one. This is the one you use if you want to go crazy. Down here, your one pedal drive. So if you want to, you know, just use the gas pedal only, once you get used to that, you can actually one pedal drive this. And once you come off the accelerator, of course, then the motors will slow the car down and you, and you get your regenerative braking and things like that. Down here, there's propulsion sound. Propulsion sound is generated to enhance the driving experience. The so sound level is mode dependent, whisper, engage, unbridled maximum. So it'll actually make a noise when you accelerate if you want it to. And here's your cameras. You can see you get a nice top-down view of the car. You can zoom in and out. You can zoom in and out on that thing. You know, zoom in, zoom back out, reposition it however you want it. Right here, you can see there's a front view camera on the front of the car. What you're seeing there is what you're seeing there. There's three buttons up here. If we touch this, of course, it's just going to give us just the front narrow view. If we tap this button, it's going to give you this wider view, and it's kind of in like three parts. Kind of interesting. Valet mode. You put a pin in, and uh, your valet can only do so much with the car, which is probably exactly what you want. Charge. Push that button. You can see it's got the little level indicator for the battery. Once again, it gives you here percentage and miles of range. Go into display. If we touch calm screen here, it's just gonna show you this nice calm screen with just the date and time, not all that crazy stuff. Tap it to bring it all back. So while we're here in the access tab, you see this little button of what looks like a rear hatch on a car. If we tap this, it's gonna open the rear hatch of the vehicle and the little animation down here shows it open. If we tap it again, it'll make some noise. If we tap it again, it's gonna close the rear hatch, and of course the animation will go back to closed. There it is. Now down here in the bottom of the screen is where they put all the climate controls. Now, I, like most people, am not the biggest fan of on-screen climate controls. You know, it should be physical buttons, that kind of thing. But these are actually okay because they're always here. They don't ever go away. Now, right here's your temperature control. If we tap on that, of course, it brings up this big slider. You can slide whatever temperature you want. Or, of course, you just want to, if you just want to tap it real quick to change the temperature, you can do that. We'll drop that down out of the way. Here's your controls for your driver's side heated seats. Once again, you can turn those on or off. Select how hot you want it. Heat a steering wheel. Here's your fan speed controller. I like it's got this little animation of a spinning fan when it's running. If we turn it to off, of course, the animation stops running. Set your speeds by sliding or tapping. Going to the other side, of course, you got your click controls for your defrosters, for your passenger side heated seats, and of course, their climate control zone. Tap this button here, it's gonna pull up a more detailed climate controls. So you see this button right here says dual. If I tap that, now it's in dual zone climate control and I can adjust both sides to be different. So say I want to make this one 74 degrees and that side 67. I can do that. If I tap dual again and turn it off dual zone, then it synchronizes both sides to be the same temperature. Up on the top of that, you got your power control, AC, max AC, recirc, that kind of thing. Down here in the middle, you got the uh, controls to tell it where to blow the air out on the feet, up top, defroster. And what I think is cool is when you tell it where to blow, it gives you a little air lines on the screen showing you where the air is blowing. Kind of, kind of fun. But I think my favorite part of this infotainment screen is right here. Now, as you can see right here in the center is your radio power button. Now this is not a separate screen. This is part of this entire screen. If I tap this, turns the radio on, gets you this little animation. Tap it again, turns it off, you get another little animation. This volume control is actually bonded to the screen. This is not set into the screen. It doesn't go through the screen. It is on top of the screen. They've engineered this thing in a way to where the screen knows that you're turning it. So it's almost like the volume control on early iPods, except it's a physical knob on top of a screen. And I love this because you can just quickly reach down and adjust your volume 
And it's got this satisfying little click too. You don't have to tap, tap, tap on a screen or slide or anything like that. You can just reach down real quick. Don't even have to look, turn the knob back and forth. As we make our way below the infotainment screen, you do have some charging ports down here, USB A and C. Very nice. Back from that, there's this nice rubberized area that's kind of in two sections. This is left section is actually a wireless charging pad. So I've set my phone on that. It's going to start charging. Back from that, you got dual cup holders with that grippy rubber in the bottom again. Back from that, here again is your gear selector. So this is pretty much the same selector that Ford is using in a lot of vehicles, including the Ford GT supercar. So if you have a Mach-E, you can say you've got a Ford GT gear selector. Behind that, here's your center armrest. Now note, I did not call that a console because this is just the armrest. Now, if we fold that out of the way, then we have access to the center console under this roll top lid. If we push that back and look down in here, you do have a 12 volt round port. So you do still have a regular 12 volt port in here. And you got this nifty little place that you can uh, store your key right next to that. Not exactly a huge storage area, but it's big enough. You can definitely hold stuff in there. I do kind of like the roll top lid. Now, another interesting touch in this center console is if you go down below where the cup holders and wireless charging is, you'll see there's another storage area down below. It's got another rubberized base to it where you can put things down there. They won't slide around. Kind of cool. You got some pretty good center console storage in this car. Coming up to the ceiling, a typical rear view mirror. No rear view mirror camera of any kind. It's just a rear view mirror. Back from that, your dome lights. That's pretty typical. Here's your taco holder. I mean, your sunglasses holder. And Behind that and all the way back is your massive sunroof. Now this is one big piece of glass. This does not open. This is not for any kind of ventilation. It is just to look through, but can you imagine drive, just driving on a clear night and looking up through this thing? That's gotta be awesome. Now let's go ahead and climb on into the rear of the car. And you can see the same theme continues in the rear. You got the nice soft touch black with the contrasted red stitching. Same door release, same B&O sound system in the rear. I like how the exact same seat patterns from the stitching to the perforations, the styling overall continues into the rear. Very, very nice. They didn't leave the rear out of this. They, they made sure that they got the same amenities. As you can see, you can sit three across in the rear like most cars, unless you want cup holders, then you're going to have to pull this center down and that's where your cup holders are. Down here on the back of the center console is the rear climate control vents. Now it is only the vents and of course an air or no air switch. No temperature or fan controls back here, just the vents. Below that though, you do get another type A and type C USB charging port. So your rear passengers can also charge things. Sitting down in the rear of the Mach-E is actually not bad. You've got a decent amount of leg room. You don't have miles of leg room, but you do have a decent amount. And the headroom is awesome in here. I mean, I can stick my hand sideways between my head and this glass ceiling. Once again, that cool illusion on the outside where it looks like the roof is a lot lower than it is. That's, that's what's so cool about that design is you get the headroom, but you still get the sporty coupe style. So very nice. Seats, mostly comfortable. You do have some nifty little dome lights here on the side. Um, above your grab handle button in the middle to turn them on and off. Otherwise, not much to talk about in the rear, but it's not bad back here. For accessing the cargo area of the vehicle, of course, you can either hit the button on the screen that I showed you earlier, button on the key fob, or just reach right under here. And of course it will lift itself right up and you get a fairly decent amount of cargo space now It is kind of robbed by the sloping roof design of the car. So tall items aren't gonna be great Of course you can easily fold those rear seats down to get a little more room It does usually have this cargo cover that folds up and down with the hatch I think something happened with the previous owner Maybe that they got busted or something because it's just laying in the back and As you can see it is kind of flexible that way if you have something that's kind of oddly shaped Maybe sticking up a little further this thing will kind of flex around that and it'll still cover your cargo. Now there's not a lot to look at in the cargo area. You do have another 12 volt round back here, so you got some power here. Your floor, if you lift that up, you get a little more storage for your chargers and whatnot back here. Now an interesting touch, you see the level it sits at now. If I pick this up, pull it out slightly, and drop it down, it'll actually sit down a little bit lower to give you eh, about two to three inches more cargo room in the back. Or pick it back up and put it back where you had it if that's the way you want it. Another neat touch back here is your cargo light. It's pretty bright LED. And in the center, you got an illuminated Mustang logo. That's kind of cool. And then like with most cars, when you're done, just hit your button right here and it'll close itself right back down. Now this being an electric car, it does have a front trunk instead of an engine or a frunk. And the only way into that frunk is to reach on here and pull this hood latch twice, one, too. and you don't have to reach up under here and pull any latches once it's unlatched from the inside you can just pull it right up 
there are some fans in here please disregard those running right now but as you can see you get a decent amount of storage in here it is kind of divided so if maybe you can pull them clips and pull these dividers out and get a little bit bigger whole overall storage instead of this divided but it's a decent amount of storage in here you get a cargo lot over here and your um, emergency oh god they kidnapped me release button and it just closes right back down like a normal car hood all right now let's talk about horsepower range on this thing although this is a 21 car we're going to talk in 20 2023 numbers just to make sure we're completely accurate now your lowest level with the standard range battery is going to be have about 247 miles of range that of course is with the rear wheel drive configuration that's going to have about 266 horsepower 317 pound feet of torque and a zero to 60 time of about 5.8 seconds. You can also go up to an extended range battery with a rear wheel drive to get you about 306 miles of range, 290 horsepower, 317 pound feet of torque, 0 to 6.1. Or if you want to go all the way up, extended range battery, 346 horsepower, 428 pound feet of torque, 0 to 60 and 4.8 with a range of about 290. As far as pricing for a 2023 model on the Ford website itself, just start around $47,000 at your absolute base model, no options, and range all the way up to just under 70,000 before options for your top of line GT model. Now I went on there and I fully spec'd one out. I checked all the boxes, highest trim, and mine came out to right around $79,000 with shipping. So you're talking about if you want to go all out, crazy car, all the features, fast as you can get, all wheel drive, you're talking about an $80,000 car brand new for 2023. All right, let's get out and drive the Mach-E. Now just for normal acceleration, it already feels pretty quick. It already feels, you know, it, it's great. It gets up to speed nicely and I'm not even doing anything crazy right now. Getting up on the highway here, it's a pretty comfortable car to drive actually. It's, it's, ni it's a nice place to be. It's not bad at all. You got plenty of room. You got great visibility everywhere. Now hitting one of these big bumps up here. Yeah, it's not the softest thing in the world. You're definitely gonna feel the big bumps, but you know, that's a, that's a thing. Um, if you can see in the upper corners of the gauge screen, you can see those lines. Those are actually the animation lines for Unbridled. This is the drive mode I'm in right now. This is the pretty much sport mode, the fastest mode. You remember earlier I was saying that you that it does have graphics but you don't see them until you're driving. That is those graphics, and that's kind of cool. And as I come to a stop, you see those corner graphics just kind of completely go away. And with the green light, we'll accelerate again, and as you accelerate, you can see the graphic lines forming in the corners. And the more intensely I accelerate, the more intense the lines get. By the way, great time to speak about handling because I did take that turn somewhat fast this thing's not a bad handler either especially in this unbridled sport mode not bad at all let's see let's turn it to whisper and of course now the graphics change are much more subtle and you get a slightly more composed you know calmer not as intense insane driving experience as you would in unbridled now that's not to say that if i put my foot down it's still not going to take off because it is. Let's get it in, in engage mode and see what happens now. It still takes off like a rocket ship, even in engage mode. So your drive modes, they do make a difference, but no matter what you do, this thing is still is still an absolute rocket ship. Now let me talk about this one pedal drive feature. I've got it turned on right now. This one pedal drive is actually great. So I'm just pressing down on the accelerator. I'm taking off, I'm driving, no problem. If I come off the gas just a little bit, I keep calling it the gas because, you know, cars, of course, it decelerates the car. But if I decide to just come off the gas completely, my foot is completely off the gas. I've got it tucked up towards me. It is going to take this car all the way down to zero miles an hour. And now I'm sitting still. I've never once hit the brakes. And yet the car is completely still. And I'll put her on unbridled and take off. Yeah, this thing is, wow, this thing is fast. This thing is an absolute rocket ship, wow. That is what electric cars are all about right there. Instant torque, crazy acceleration, or at least the electric sporty cars. You know, stuff like your Nissan Leaf, it still has the instant torque, but it doesn't have the crazy acceleration. This has the crazy acceleration. 50 miles an hour, punch it, and it puts my head against the headrest, and we take off again. That is crazy and that's what these sporty electric cars are, are about yeah this thing may be a crossover suv type of thing with a mustang badge on it but this thing is still a sports car it has a suspension ride of a sports car it handles fairly well obviously it's not going to handle 
exactly like a, a sports car. It's, it's definitely not going to handle anything like that Panamera right there. Not even close. But it still handles well enough because it is pretty much an electric sports car. Just, you know, four doors. But now, once again, I'm sitting at the stoplight. I haven't even touched the brake pedal and I'm sitting completely still. And of course, these cars are designed to be smart enough to activate the brake lights while using this one pedal drive. That way the brake light's not dependent on your pedal, on you using the brake pedal and people don't smash into you. And off we go. All right, in unbridled, let's get a zero to 60 and go. All right, so using my manual stopwatch because I don't have a good app to actually track it, that came out to about 5.7. So five and a half seconds to 60 from zero in unbridled in a first edition rear wheel drive Mach-E. That's pretty quick. These things are fast. <laughs> These things really are quick. I love, I like this car. This thing is fast. Now you can say what you want about them slapping the Mustang name on an electric crossover. It may not have been, you know, the best choice, but the Mustang name is a very strong one. It's very well known. And you know, this is Ford's first full electric car. You know, they've had plenty of hybrids up until now. This is their first fully electric production car. And I mean, this thing is fun and it is just as fun to drive as a Mustang. And I think they used a very strong name for a very potent vehicle. Anyway, overall driving experience, I really do like this thing. You got a cool view out over the hood. You got great visibility all the way around. It's fast. The seats are comfortable. The suspension isn't exactly comfortable, but it's a sports car. What do you expect? It's got great tech, huge screen. This is a cool car and I'm greatly enjoying myself in this vehicle. All right, y'all, so that's gonna do it for the full inside-outside tour and driving experience of the Ford Mustang Mach-E, this one being the first edition. Now let's answer that question, should Ford have put the Mustang name on this vehicle? I personally believe there's probably three opinions out there. One, there's the ones that are like, whatever, it's a cool car, I don't care what the name is. Then there's people like me who, who believe, yeah, maybe they should have given it a different name, but, they chose a very, very strong brand name to associate with this car. Mustang is one of the strongest names in the automotive industry. You say Mustang, people know what you're talking about. They know you're talking about a fast, fun sports car, fun to drive, very cool. And this being Ford's first true full electric, also being an electric sports vehicle, it's, it's kind of fitting actually, if you, if you stop and think about it to use that strong sports car name on this car because it is fast, it is fun, it is cool. No matter what you think of the naming, it is cool. Now, yes, there are, there's gonna be that third group of people that are the Mustang purists and they're gonna be like, oh, <laughs> hell no. Do not put a Mustang name on anything shaped like an SUV. And I get that, you know, every, Every vehicle has its purists, whether it's exotic cars, Mustangs, Corvettes, whatever. I mean, there's Corvette purists that think the C8 is the dumbest thing Chevrolet ever did. It should still be front engine. You're gonna have that group everywhere. Me personally, I love this thing. And I think the Mustang name is a very strong name and I think it was used pretty well on this application actually. But no matter what you think, here's the facts. This thing is cool. This thing is cool, it is fast, it's relatively comfortable, it's fun as hell to drive, it's got a lot of great tech in it. It really is almost the total package in my opinion. And it's practical. It seats five, it's got cargo volume. This is a neat ride and I'm very glad I had the chance to check this thing out even though I'm very late to the game. I'm thrilled, nonetheless I got to check it out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, go back to the channel and uh, check out the rest of my videos. I got a bunch of other neat car reviews as well as a bunch of other types of videos, something for everybody on the channel. And if you do like what you see on this channel, so consider subscribing. Let's grow this channel as much as we possibly can. Once again, huge special thanks to Ted Russell Ford on Parkside Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee. I specified the, the road because there are two locations. There's another one on Kingston Pike. Huge thanks to them for letting me use this vehicle for this review today. Make sure to check them out at the link in the description below. Also, if you happen to have anything cool, interesting, whatever, especially new models that you'd be willing to let me review and drive on the channel, hit me up at my email address in the description below. I'll try to work something out. Anyway, thanks y'all so much for watching. Y'all have a good one.